Hi, this is Brittany Bond, and welcome back to the podcast. Today, I'm very excited to talk about twin flame love. Um, a lot of people have been reaching out asking, what is a tem- twin flame? Uh, how do you find your own? How can I find my own twin flame? Like It seems like you and Faraday, my boyfriend, are super happy with each other, and you guys found each other. So how do I do that? So I dedicated this whole podcast to that. This is obviously a work in progress. Like, I don't know everything. This is just my experience and um, what's worked for for me. And also, I love that it's a discovery along the way. You know, like, the journey is the destination. And hold on. I just need to drink some more water, apparently. I noticed that when I start to make a podcast, like I, it's like the energy is built up in my body and it sometimes gets stuck in my throat. So I have to drink more water and then like clear it out. It's like my vibration is shifting. Um, okay. So twin flame love. Everyone wants love. Everyone wants connection. And I know that for myself, I've always wanted to have this deep soul love so not just like oh I love you and you love me and you know when we're one big happy family it's like (laughs) if anyone knows that reference you'll get it um but I've I've always wanted like a a love this might be me having my sun and my moon in Scorpio but just like this super deep emotional um love that it's activating that's nourishing for my soul like I don't want someone to just love my body and my mind I want I want them to like touch my soul you know like something that's like going all the way down to the depths of me and when I think about like okay so let me just define what a twin flame love is and then we can go into my story of how I found mine in my opinion, a twin flame is someone who, well, I think it might be easier to say first what a soulmate is and then a twin flame. So like a soulmate is someone that you, that, you know, you're literally, when you're with them, your soul feels connected to them. We have a lot of souls, soulmates in our lives. So a soulmate is someone where when you're with them, like your soul kind of feels like it's gotten a big hug and you just feel supported and nourished and, um, kind of confirmation of who you are and and what you're meant to do in the world. Um, I've had many soulmates in my life and it's just, it's, I think the best word to describe a soulmate is like comforting. Like you're not alone and this person, you know, shares a part of your soul. So that's a soulmate. In my opinion, there's like many a soul soulmates in the world uh, that for each person, each one of us, we have many soulmates out there. And a soulmate doesn't necessarily need to be romantic. It can be someone who you have a very deep soul connection with that, you know, you, and it could be someone the same sex, opposite sex. Um, I've dated a lot of soulmates um, and I, I enjoyed every, you know, every moment of that deep connection but I always felt like there was something more. And this is not really something you can like say to someone you're dating. Like, this is great, but I, I think I deserve something more. I mean, you can say that, but I don't think it's going to go over well. Um, and so a lot of times I kept this to myself when I was in relationships with people that I would consider my soulmate because I loved them very much. I loved our lives that we had together. And also I felt this you know, this like itch inside of me that was like, there's something more out there and I don't want to settle for whatever is less than this thing that I can feel coming. Uh, And it was something that I didn't really say to a lot of people because I don't know. I just feel like a lot of people are just happy to like find love that they are just, they'll cling to any love that they find. And the, the idea of, of, asking for more or desiring something deeper I I don't know I feel like a lot of people that I spoke to growing up and into my early 20s they just didn't really understand me so I just kind of stopped talking about it 
Um, but also, uh, me getting married at 18, really, um, I feel like that made my timeline very different than most people because I had love at a very young age and someone who loved me very dearly, but I didn't, I would consider that my ex-husband to be at most a soulmate, but not more than that. Um, and actually I feel like he was just a really good friend that I happened to get married to, which is such an awkward situation to be in. Like someone that you're supposed to be like fully in love with and, you know, making babies with and at least according to the religion I grew up in and just be super happy and forever together, even into the next life. And I was like, <laughs> I feel like we're just really good friends. <laughs> um, so I never had the, the, the scarcity mindset around love. Like love was always around me. But we're getting into my story. Hold on. Let me just define what I view a twin flame is. So the soulmate, what we're saying is like this comforting person can be romantic or platonic that just you feel a part of your soul has been recognized when you're around them and you just feel very yeah just like at home with this person i view uh, a twin flame is some is that and something more so a twin flame in my opinion is is activating it's inspiring it's someone who you continue to grow in just by knowing the other person exists like you're you're activated just whether you're with that person or not and there's a lot of people who speak about meeting their twin flame and then you know not currently being with them and i'll explain more what why that is later but just knowing that that person exists in the world is just like ooh, like i feel so charged up about it um and in a twin flame is someone who like it exponentially accelerates your growth. So like a soulmate is someone that through their mirroring of you, this this person that is like you and that shares a soul with you, for a lot of people, this is already such a big deal. And it's so comforting to know that that person is out there and someone who they can feel at home with. But a twin flame is someone that you like, <laughs> you partner with and you like create a whole new world with like you change something epic in the world and this is a lot of people when you when you google twin flame and you start researching it more you'll also find a term called divine union because there's this theory that when the feminine and the masculine get together whether it's in a male or female body it doesn't matter but just like a balanced um of the feminine and the masculine energies coming together in in union and you have what happens is you have all of this energy suddenly like you're just like and if you only focus on each other in this twin flame union the energy is actually so strong that it will it will literally inflame you it'll burn you up and so the goal of this twin flame union this divine union is to not to focus all that energy just on each other it's to stand side by side and focus on the world and change something in the world so like through your union you're connecting both of you have this really strong connection to source energy to god whatever you want to call it you get this you you individually are getting these downloads and this really strong energy and then you're holding hands together and funneling that energy into the world into like making really beautiful things in the world and shifting our current consciousness in some way so that's what a twin flame love is <laughs> it's a lot and it it feels a lot and it takes a lot of work this is not like happy ever after right when you get together um it is every it's everything i've ever wanted and i'm so grateful for it and every single day it is challenging and it brings out different parts of myself that sometimes I would rather not look at, <laughs> but it's, it's, it's totally worth it. So if this is something that calls to you and you want this kind of, not just this feeling of at homeness with someone, but this feeling of like activation, inspiration, and, and like someone who spurs you on and supports you and, and like, invites you encourages you to this exponential growth <clears throat> then 
I will share my story of how I created this in my reality and I hope that this can inspire you and shift some things in your reality so that you can have this as well. <clears throat> so like I said, I've never I've always had this abundance when it com- comes to love. Um and when we first off, when we like look at how we are loving s- us being open to love, anything around love, you have to ask yourself, how was I first shown love? in my life because if you don't look at the programming and the belief system that you were handed when you first came into the world then you're going to be already making it harder for yourself so the easiest thing to do i'm saying this this is actually the easiest thing to do a lot of people don't want to look at the the way they were brought up or look at their parents or all this stuff because it can bring up some painful stuff but this is actually the easiest way to get what you want is to face yourself and face where you came from <coughs> So for me the way that I where I came from was my mom like I came to this into this world with like so much love to give it's just like fully heart open and I give a lot of this credit to my mother because she told us every single day she loved us she was always giving us these huge hugs like right when we woke up and any at any moment we'd let her she'd be giving us a hug and she really she told me like at every moment that she could how beautiful i was how smart i was that i could do everything i ever wanted in the world like anything i set my heart and my mind to i could accomplish so like my mom was like my biggest cheerleader and she you could feel her love like like right now in this moment when i tap into her like i can feel how much my mom loves me and that's always going to be there it's always been there and i feel like it's like this it's like this warm I I always knew and I always know that my mom will love me very deeply no matter what. Like if you've listened to any of my other podcasts, you know that my family is actually not speaking to me right now because I chose to leave the religion that I was raised in. But that doesn't mess with the love that my mom has for me. Like I don't care if my mom's not speaking to me right now because I'm choosing to not be in the religion. I still know and I can feel very deeply inside of me how much she loves me. And I carry this around in my heart. It like feels like a warm hug wherever I go. Like I know my mom has my back and I know if I really needed her, she would be there for me. She really lived this love. Like she was always there doing her best to make our dreams come true within the programming that she was given. I say that last part because what my mom didn't show us was how to love ourselves because she didn't know how to love herself. She was never given that belief system. She didn't see that experientially experientially through, you know, my grandparents, my my grandma. And being a woman in the society that we are raised in, especially being raised as a Jehovah's Witness <coughs> in a very conservative Christian religion where women didn't have that much rights, my mom would always show up for herself only if it was in response for showing up for us, like her kids or someone else in need. So it was always like this secondary byproduct. It was never like, you know, mom, what did you do today? Like, and then she would, she would never reply. Like I did this thing for myself. She'd be like, oh, I did this, you know, for your sisters or for someone in the church, they needed help or, you know, for your dad, I did this for him. And I was always like, frustrated at my mom because I think there was some inner part of me that was like I wanted her to be this role model for me of also not just love externally but love internally like I was always like mom you don't need to live for everyone else like why don't you live for yourself but this was very normal programming um, in society we grew up in like within our religion and also, I just think in the world today, it's just very normal for women to give every, put everyone else first and only give to ourselves when it's in service to someone else. Um, so I learned very much how to love others, like heart open and fully, which I, I'm very grateful for. I feel like this is a muscle that you have to grow. This is a skill set that you learn. Um, but my opportunity for growth if you want to put it that way like my task that I needed to learn was not how to love others was actually how to love myself like how to and with that I mean how to how saying no to someone else meant saying yes to myself and this is something I learned like in therapy many years later 
because I'd been given so much. Like I would normally give so much that I would like my normal way of loving was that I would give everything until I got drained. And then I would either become resentful or I'd close my heart and then I would go away into hiding until I recharged. So I didn't really have a healthy relationship with self-love and especially when other people were involved, especially men, because my programming growing up was always to put men first. Like even within the religion, it was like, yeah, women had a, a say in like sharing their opinions, but the man is the one who decided everything. So you better like make sure that he's happy. And I'm like, whoa, what about that programming? (laughs) Um, and then also like boundaries, like my, with my dad, he never, he was very domineering. Uh, I would consider him a narcissist. Like everything was about him. And he not only wanted us to f- think the same way he thought, he wanted us to feel the same way he felt. And so this was like, I wasn't really shown how to have boundaries, especially around men of like saying no. And I need to do what's good for me. And this is what's healthy for me. Like, I didn't have any concept of this. I learned this in therapy. I learned this throughout the years, just through trial and error of experiencing how these things go. So for you, it's really important to, like, look at how your parents taught you, like, what, like, your beliefs around what love is, your self-love, like, Do you have any beliefs around how much you love yourself? What does it mean to love yourself? And you can journal about this. This is a really good journaling prompt is, you know, what did my mom teach me about self-love? What did my mom teach me about loving others? So like internal love and external love. And this is not just how they, how do I put this? This is not just what they said, but this is also how they actually did. Because my mom was always like, love everyone. But like in in her actions, she didn't, she didn't display a lot of self-love and then also how your dad was like for me my dad was very like you know my big belief system around men when growing up because of my dad was do not trust men like my dad was always trying to fill up his self-love through the love of my mom my mom gave him the love that me and my sisters gave him and it was never enough and so my view around men and how men showed love was just like that they are going to suck you dry and that they're they don't have your best interests at heart because what my dad would do is like he would try and get my mom to fill up on his love but that he needed to give himself and then he would make her feel bad like and say mean things to her and try and basically say like you don't give me enough attention you're always and like say you're always giving too much attention to the kids like, that's how far gone he was. Like, he didn't actually like... I remember one time my dad even saying that he didn't... He wished that he had never had us. And the only reason why he had us was because my mom wanted us. And then on the flip side of that, my mother told me later on when I was a teenager and they were about to um, get divorced was like... She said, I would go through the whole thing all over again. Even at the end when my dad got really abusive. She was like, I would do it all over again just because I meant that I get to have you three girls. And I just remember, like, on the one hand being like, wow, that's so beautiful how much my mom loves us. And on the other hand being like, oh, mom, take care of yourself. Like, how are you showing up for yourself? Like, you're basically just sacrificing your whole life for us. And what does this mean about self-love? So, um, yes. So I want to go back to how much this um so how does this relate to finding your twin flame i'm just looking at my notes and also if you're watching visually you can see that my twin flame is doing his exercise in the background which i find hilarious um so my viewpoints of going into the love the love field was you know my mom saying keep loving everyone with an open heart but don't necessarily show up for yourself boundaries and also you know take putting yourself first my dad his view of love was women should put him first women should always put men first and also my dad was very loving when it came to like material gifts and like providing for us materially but emotionally he was so abusive and um so critical and like hurtful and that's all showing his own views of his own self-love so 
I went into the field being like, do not trust men and being very attracted to, to powerful men because my dad was a very powerful person, but also being very like wary around them, like not trusting them. And, and, and like the belief I had was like, you have to be really careful because at any point they might do something that hurts you. So I was like, whew, my way of dealing with this was like just to get with men that I didn't need to worry about. So I remember someone telling me, Brittany, you keep getting with guys who are not on your level. And, and I remember thinking, yeah, but they're my soulmates. Like I love them. But it's also because I think some part of me was not ready to be met fully as my like of someone on my level as powerful as me because I didn't trust men. So this is something you have to really look at if you don't trust the the person, the, the, the species that you're trying to call in, like whether, whatever it is, guy or girl. Um, but the main thing, like this is a, like, whew, I want to just make a big full stop here is the first thing you have to do in order to attract in the love of your life, your twin flame is you have to love yourself. So this is something that I had to learn like through therapy and through just many years of putting other people first and then finally getting fed up and like spending a lot of time by myself and figuring out who I was. And so a really great way to like, if you're like, okay, how do I know if I love myself is date yourself first. So just like you would plan out a date with someone else or you have ideas of what it would be nice if someone took you on a date, whatever it is go and view yourself as that person. So like some, some opportunities for dates that I like to do with myself is I love taking a bath and like lighting a bunch of candles and putting, um, like, you know, no nice oils or bath bombs in the, in the water so that it's soft and maybe even watching my favorite TV show in the bathtub because like, it's just such a naughty thing to do. I loved, I love doing that. And then, um, I love going out for food by myself sometimes and like, and just really enjoying every single bite of the food and like picking my favorite restaurant and just ordering whatever I want, even if it doesn't make sense. And also I love, I love having dates by myself and having a coffee by myself or a chai. I go and get a chai at my favorite cafe and I journal and I read something that's really inspiring Another other things you can do is like get massages, like anything that is nourishing for your soul and anything that is like your soul, your body, your spirit, where you, you go through it and you come out lighter and you feel like more inspired, more activated, more grounded in yourself. And that's, that's dating yourself. And also, like I said before, like saying no to other people to create time for yourself is saying yes for yourself. So a really great idea too is if you're like, okay, this sounds good, but I don't know how to start is put a date on the calendar and just write like date with myself. And then when other people ask you, oh, do you have something going on Saturday afternoon? You're like, you look in the calendar and you're like, oh, that's the date I have with myself. And you just, you just tell them, I already have plans during that time. And then this is like where you start blocking out this time with yourself and then you just make it really nice and yummy and do nice things for yourself and speak really nicely to yourself. So this is you practicing how you want your partner to treat you. Because if you are not willing to treat yourself so good and so nicely, then how can you expect anyone else to do that for you? So you have to first be this mirror for yourself. And if you are like, I don't know what I like, if I want to go on a date by myself, I don't know what to do then the first step is to spend you need then i would say okay you need to be spending some time by yourself because if you don't know what you like the first step is to be alone outside of everyone else's energy and to give this to yourself so even if that first date on the calendar is you just being alone by yourself just going to nature is always good going to the park going to nature somehow and just spending time by yourself. And then you can just ask yourself, like, what do I like? And what would I want to do in this moment? Like, what feels good for me? And just step by step, you can do a flow date with yourself where you're like, okay, I have three hours by myself and I'm just going to do the first thing that feels nice and then go on from there. And I will tell you that when you do this more and more and you start blocking off these times for yourself, your self-love increases your self-worth increases. You start carrying yourself in the world 
like with more oomph you know like you literally can walk with your head held higher and you're just like i love myself because you're you're like you're taking action on what it means to love yourself because it's one thing to say i love myself it's another thing to actually do something (laughs) that is self-love and a lot of times we wait for other people to come to us and then we say oh it's self-love because i left this relationship this wasn't healthy for me or whatever whatever but why do we need to wait for something bad to happen in order for us to love ourselves why don't we do nice things for ourselves first and like build up this trust with our bodies because the more that you do things that you that it's good for your body and your soul and your spirit the more that you're your inner self your inner child whatever you want to call it starts trusting you and this is when you things start flowing even more fluidly in your life it's a little windy here the oh <laughs> the camera just fell over on me another thing too is like do you know who you are because a lot of people are like i want to find this twin flame love and it's like do you realize that a twin flame is someone who mirrors who you are so they only can show up in your life when you actually know who you are and like it's it's fine having your twin flame show up in your life is is a confirmation that you were like you have found your authentic self because if you If you don't know who you are, then how are you going to know if this person actually mirrors you and is your twin flame? And this is why it's like, this is why Faraday and I always talk about also like, be yourself, be your authentic self. Because when the people that are your soul tribe, the the person that is your twin flame comes into your life, you will be able to recognize them. Otherwise, you'll spend your whole life being like, is this it? Is this the person? Do I actually love this person? Is this is this really <laughs> my soul tribe? Is this really my twin flame? It's like you are the only person that can confirm that. Be- and you have to do that by knowing who you are and being your authentic self. And it's like, how do you how do you be your authentic self? Well, I made a whole course on this, how to be your authentic self. You can find it in my link tree on Instagram. And like hundreds and hundreds of people have been taking this course now. And it's shifting people's lives. Like I have friends who are messaging me, people on Instagram, my soul tribe messaging me and saying like, I've listened to some of these episodes like six or seven times, 10 times over because they're so impactful for me. So I'm not going to go into that. You know where the resources are if you need that to be your authentic self. But I have more things to say about twin flames. So Again, your twin flame can only mirror to you how much you love yourself and how much you know yourself. They will mirror to you what you have the opportunity. They also will mirror to you what you, I love to say, the opportunity have to work on yourself. So it's not like these people show up in your life and, you know, you never fight or, you know, everything's perfect forever and ever. The point of growing, the point of being in these timelines and in these bodies is to grow our consciousness. And a twin flame is someone who has the biggest opportunity to help you grow your consciousness. And they will do this through not just confirming who you are, which is what a soulmate is, but a twin flame will also mirror to you the things that you do not prefer anymore to be and and like basically negative beliefs that you have about yourself. And in the moment that they reveal this to you, you get the opportunity to decide, do you still prefer to hold this belief or do you want to let it go Uh, most people go through their lives not wanting to face themselves because they're worried that they will look too closely that if they look too closely they will find that they were they're unlovable or unworthy of connection and this is why if you research it you hear a lot of people saying i met my twin flame but we are not together right now and the reason for that is because that twin flame started reflecting back to them the things that they needed to, not needed to, they had the opportunity to let go of in order to love themselves more. These negative beliefs that were no longer serving them. But a lot of people don't want to face this because they're like, oh my God, if I face this, then, then I won't, then I'll, like, then I'll be found out somehow because they have this deep, deep, deep rooted belief that they're not even conscious of within themselves, that they are not worthy of love. And that they are not worthy of this connection. But when you 
this is why I was saying like the first thing you have to do when you are going on this twin flame journey, this is why that's so important is you have to love yourself and you have to be wor- you have to know that you are worthy of this connection. Because when you meet your twin flame, it's like the beginning of facing yourself completely. And if you don't have this as a foundation, you're going to be knocked over already. You're going to be like, this is why people break up with their twin flames because they're like, they don't have enough energy and they don't have enough self-love to like hold on through those times when they're facing themselves and they're facing parts of themselves they don't like. And they're facing parts of themselves that they want to let go of. It's like you need this love. You need the self-love in order to remember yourself and remember who you are and be connected to your source and your authentic version of yourself in order to keep uncovering more and more of your authenticity. If you don't love yourself, then you're going to be like, oh, no, no, I can't uncover more and more because what if it's something there that I don't love? And what if it's something there that's you know, I really don't like about myself and then it'll make my partner not like about me. So if you love yourself and your partner loves themselves, like this is the thing that is going to get you through everything. And this is something that Faraday and I have, like before we met each other, we both had, it wasn't like we popped out loving ourselves. Like I've, I've po- I popped out <laughs> into this timeline knowing and remembering a lot more of who I am than most people. So I've known who I was from a very young age But the self-love is a journey that we all go on. This is not something that from a very young age, you're just like, I love my, like, actually, this is how we pop out. But then we have this programming that's put on top of us that makes us question our self-love and makes us question whether we're worthy. And Faraday and I individually went down these paths of figuring this out and came down, came to the conclusion individually before we met each other oh, I really love myself. I'm worthy of connection. I am worthy of this beautiful life that I'm building. That is so important because you can't fill that hole for each other. You can't, like, you have to individually realize there's no hole to fill that you're complete and worthy already on your own. Um, so if you're, th- if you're listening to this and you're like, okay, Brittany, I really get, I get what you're saying, but like, I don't know if I'm worthy of love. I don't know if I'm worthy of connection. I want to tell you something that is very simple. I don't know if you can hear there's like kids screaming <laughs> nearby, but you know, we're in the park. Okay. But listen to this. This is super important. Um, this is very simple. This is like the foundation of everything. The vibration of the universe is unconditional love. We are all made up of unconditional love. And by your pure existence as a soul on this timeline, you are worthy of love and connection. Because we are made up of whatever vibration and matter is made up of the whole universe, which is love. And by us popping into these timelines... We already have this. It's like it's like handed to us when we come out. It's like, okay, you are deemed worthy of love. You are deemed worthy of connection. You are good enough just by pure existence. And then we get this programming that's put on top of us. It's like, are you sure you're worthy? Are you sure? And that's all bullshit. So you can make this a lot harder. You can make the journey harder. I mean, you have to test this out. You have to experientially realize this. And I'm... I'm sending you lots of love on that journey because, again, that's, that's what the, the vibration of the universe is. and we can, That's all we can do is keep sending this loving energy towards each other. And I will tell you that at the end of it, you will come back to this and you'll be like, oh, oh, yeah, it really is that simple. Just by me existing, I'm already good enough. I'm already worthy of everything that I, my heart desires. I'm worthy of connection. I'm worthy of love. And I love myself. And I'm worthy of sticking up for myself and speaking up for myself. So, I want to go more into my how I was able to work through my own stuff in order to allow this twin play love in. So, I remember I was saying that like, you know, the thing, the opportunity for growth. <laughs> I always laugh at that a little bit because in the middle of this opportunity for growth was a lot of crying and me just being like, why the fuck is this happening to me? You know, existential crises. But um, looking back on it, I was like, oh, wow, okay, that helped me grow into the person I am today. Great. Uh huh. Um, but, you know, I had to learn how to love myself. This is something that my mom 
and my dad both didn't give me and that's fine and then the second part like after I, w- I learned to love myself I like I really and through because I ugh, I did this by one um like I was saying, I dated myself. I like went through all these times. I got therapy. I got support. Like I took courses. I took workshops, retreats. I a lot of plant medicine. Ayahuasca really helped me. So there was a lot of stuff. DMT really helped me. There was a lot of stuff that I went through on my timeline to help me love myself and come to this core belief that yes, I am worthy of love and connection just for being me. A lot of people, you know, if you're if you're willing to do the work, you get to this part. The second part, I feel a lot of people have a hard time with. I have some very close girlfriends who um, are at this second part. And this is the, okay, now, now it's time to go out and, like, interact with the other species that I want to call in. You know, like, for me, it's like I want to call in a, a, a masculine partner. And... Because, like I was saying, because I grew up with a very abusive father and in a patriarchal uh, society that was like basically man run, domineering, and suppressive culture, I didn't trust men. I didn't believe that men had my my best interests at heart, and I I didn't I didn't really experientially have a lot of touch points. Like I didn't have a lot of men in my life that were good examples. And also I'd been like sexually molested a lot as a kid by a neighbor. And like, you know, there was a lot of like men objectifying me sexually or in some way using me. And so I just was like straight up, I don't trust men. Like this is just, and not just my own experience because of who I am in the world. And because of me always choosing to empower women, I heard a lot of stories and like know a lot of situations where men were just really shitty to women. And I was like, wow, okay, now it's time to go out there and trust them. Like, how do I do that? And one second. The way that I was able to do this is very funny. And like, I just think it's like the universe, like just being super funny all around is the best way that helped me to work through my trust with men is to organize play parties and I just say that because it just sounds funny when you say that it's like I got over my distrust of men by organizing sex parties but the reason why I say that is because I saw from you know when you organize when you organize play parties like you I interviewed every single person who came and especially with men I was like I am calling in really safe men and men that I feel safe to you know, play with sexually and also that I feel safe to have around my girlfriends. Like I'm so protective of the women in my life. And so I really interviewed them like hardcore and I started to, and some of the questions that I asked in the interview process, like the application process to join the play parties was, um, you know, share your viewpoints on sexuality. Like where are you at in your growth around sexuality and share some things that you're, you're, you would like to grow in. And when you ask people, you know, what would you like to grow in your sexuality? What you end up hearing is a lot of people's insecurities. And and I heard so many stories of men that I would like, you know, see their photo and have a video call with them to interview them for the play parties. And I would be like, you know, if I met you on Tinder or at a party, like I would probably already have my defense mechanism up against this these men because they were very attractive. And on the surface, they seemed like they had all their shit together. And so I just view them as like, you know, put them in the box of my belief system as powerful men that, you know, you're attracted to, but be very careful. And therefore you're, you know, I was kind of manifesting these situations just through my belief system of attracting in very powerful men that didn't treat me very well. And I want to like, I want to just like do a little caveat there that I've had such beautiful experiences with men but the men that I ended up dating were not these men that I were very powerful that, you know, to be wary of. I ended up dating a lot of really beautiful soulmate men that I trusted, but they didn't necessarily activate me in the way that I wanted to be activated. But I was very attracted to these powerful, like, narcissistic type of men because they seemed so sure of themselves. They remember me so much of my father. 
Um, but it's because I was trying to work out this belief system. And then when I interviewed them for the play parties, they were just, cause I was just like the safe space for them to finally share the things that have been on their heart for so long. And they were like, yeah, I really, I really like, I really don't love myself or like I, I, I have like body dysmorphia or like this, these men were saying this or like, I just want to feel like this closeness to women. I don't know how to build. They were saying they don't trust women and they had really bad situations with women in the past. And I was like, are we all just not trusting each other? And this is what it came down to. I was like, wow, everyone is just scared of each other for the most part. I'm saying, I'm not saying this is everyone, but in my interview process, what I found is that, you know, a lot of people, men, women, aliens, everyone in between, they go through this process of self-love and then feeling like, okay, can I trust the people that I actually love? Is it safe for me to open my heart? And when I, you know, I interviewed these men and then I, and then I invited them to the play parties, invited them to come and then, you know, experientially played with them and like got to know them and had them in my life, I realized, wow, there's some really beautiful men out there. And this is when I was able to open my heart to the idea of, like, I wasn't quite ready at this point. This is like probably a year before Faraday and I met. I wasn't quite ready to um, date my twin flame yet, but I was ready to have men in my life as friends who were on the level that I wanted my twin flame to be. So the first person that I allowed in my life was my godfather. It's like this, these, um, this man who was a business uh, mentor for me. And he's retired. He's married to his wife for like 15 years. They're super happy in love. It was nothing romantic. And he just wanted to show up in my life as a mentor. And then we became super close. And I even went and visited him and his wife. Like They're like my godparents now. But this was a man... He's such a good example. His name's Richard. I love Richard. I even have a podcast with him. So if you go into my earlier podcast, you'll see this one with me and my adoptive dad, Richard. And he is such a good example of such a good man. Like he loves his wife, Heather. He's always thinking of her. Whenever we're hanging out, me and him, if we go have a coffee by ourselves, he's like always talking about Heather and his plan for their future together and, and how much he just loves building their life. Like, uh, like, and it's like a unit, you know, like he's like thinking of like her best interest is like his best interest. And I was like, wow, there's such good men out there, you know. And then I called in like what I call my chosen brother, Aaron, who is married and he loves his wife so much. And I love hanging out with Aaron. He's such a good guy. He's the same age as me. He's a DJ. He's like traveling around the whole world you know, following his dream, following his highest excitement. And he just loves me so much. We, we randomly message each other all day long, sometimes daily, and just say how much we love each other. We try and hang out as much as possible. And he just is like always there for me. Like whenever I really need to bounce something off someone or even like ask him about some guy I was dating at the time, I would, I would message or call Aaron and he would, he'd be like, Brittany, you know, you are worthy of everything you are such a good woman. I am always here for you. Like, I just want to make sure you find a man that deserves you. And I was like, wow, thank you, Erin. <laughs> like, this is amazing. Um, and it was so beautiful to have these reflections of, like, the masculine that I really, like, I felt like, yeah, these, these men are on my level. And I love having them in my life. I'm so grateful for their energy in my life. And I feel so protected by them and so loved and like chosen and and it just felt so good in my body I was like wow and I love this and I love that I can have this because a lot of my connections with the masculine um have been like over sexualized for most of my life because I was sexually molested at a very young age and even my dad like he always had like some weird creepy sexual overtones in the way that he's out with me and yeah, I just like, I always kind of connected men want to sleep with me. There was something sexual happening here. So this is also really healing for me to have the masculine, like not want anything sexual out of me. Just want to show up for me. Just want to be there for me as a friend. Um, and just like love me unconditionally and like, and really see me, you know, and like also like really activate me. Like this is the thing about Aaron and Richard is they will always call me on my shit. Like they'll just be like, Brittany, 
you know, like I've been watching, I know I've known you for years. Like this is what I'm seeing. Like, are you really like being who you want to be in the world? Are you really like, they're like activating me to be bigger and more powerful because they know that that's, that's who I can be. And I just, I just feel so good that they're in my life. So I feel like this is, this was like my, my beginner stepping stone to having a beautiful man in my life like Faraday because before that I hadn't experientially like felt how it felt in my body to have really good men in my life that, that actually just wanted to show up for me. Like if, so for instance, what I mean is if Faraday had showed up in my life before these men, before I had allowed myself to be open to the love that these men had shown me, I would not have trusted his love because I loved myself, but I didn't know that it was possible for, I, I hadn't worked through the negative belief system of that men were untrustworthy. And so these men showed me that, that I could let go of that belief system. And so therefore, like when Faraday came into my life, I actually was able to trust his love and be like, oh yeah, this is normal. This is healthy love. This is how like real men show their love to the women that they love. So that, whew, that was super beautiful. So you have to like, you have to really sit down and journal and face, like whatever ver your version of journal, meditate, whatever, but you have to get to the point where you're willing to face the things that you, that are negative beliefs that you have around love, around the person, the type of person that you're calling in, you know, whether guy, girl, alien, you have to really ask yourself, like, is there some negative beliefs that I have that would make it so this wasn't possible? And then allow yourself to be open to the universe changing those beliefs for you. You know, like you have to decide, I choose to, like I, ha I said to myself, I choose to have good men in my life. Like this is my standard. And when I had my godfather, he was the first man. I was like, this is my standard. I choose to have men in my life. And then I had Aaron and then I had Feta and then so many amazing men that I call my soulmate, like my soulmate chosen family loves that, you know, I don't need to have a romantic relationship with them but I love them so much and I'm so grateful that they're in my life. So when Faraday came into my life, it was the, this was um, one of the biggest things that I'll say is, is the biggest test when you, when your twin flame actually comes into your life. So even if you met someone that you feel like, okay, this person is my twin flame. This is not like, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> this is not the time where you're just like, I let, I let it all go to the universe. And you know, like this is the time where you have to really ground in yourself and be like, okay, I love myself because a twin flame love is so big and so strong that you can get lost in it and you can lose yourself and your sense of yourself, your authentic self. And this is when people break up with their twin flames is because they're like, I feel like I'm losing myself. I don't even know who I am anymore. And this is, this is the reality of the twin flame love. This is where it's like you, this is why you have to also love yourself so much because they're going to not only have you face yourself and the negative beliefs that you still have left, but they're also going to love you so much more than anyone else has ever been possible that you have to be careful to not drown in that love in the, the most positive way ever, but it's a real thing. And when I was, um, when I was like ready to let Faraday's love in, we met at, we met at one of my play parties, but he, uh, was dating someone. And at the time, like if someone's dating someone at like my play parties, I just, I completely, uh, I've, I've gotten a lot more loose with this, but like my uh, words, if someone is dating someone and they come to my play party, I am so protective of their relationship and this, of the sisterhood. So if you don't know what that means, that means like I value respecting and protecting women's hearts so much more than me having some, you know, nice connection at a play party with their boyfriend that I would rather stay far away. Like, especially if I notice that the woman is a little bit hesitant to come to the play party, like I'm not going to jump, go and jump on their boyfriend or whatever. So 
intuitively I've always just like bef- before I realized this was a conscious thing, I intuitively just kind of stayed away from people's partners. Like if there was a guy, girl coming, uh, um, a boyfriend, girlfriend coming to my play parties because I wanted the woman to have a really good time. I wanted them to feel safe. And I also wanted them to experientially know what it felt like to be in sisterhood. Like, Hey, you can come and play and people are not going to like jump off to your boyfriend. And I'm not saying this is like what was happening, but that's also something I had to work through because I had been through my own heartache around sisterhood. So anyways, Faraday came to the play party with someone he was dating. And so I just like completely did not really look at him or notice he was there. And then, you know, but just by us being in each other's orbits and knowing each other existed, subconsciously we were activating each other already so much. And he told me later that like, he was just so activated and inspired by me that he wanted to, you know, make his own play party. And he was just like, wow, who's this woman who's just like doing sex parties in Thailand and like just completely doing her own thing. Cause he had always been around same, same thing that I had, but he had always been around these soulmate type of women who were comforting, but were not necessarily activating. And so, um, we started talking on the phone like he reached out to me and he was like asking you know low-key like oh I'm just asking for the play party playlist you know like the the music playlist because I always share that with everyone and I was like yeah yeah here it is and then he started like chatting with me and I was just like okay like yeah I like this guy and he I think he made it known that he had broken up with his girlfriend or whatever they weren't dating anymore and so we started chatting back and forth but like This is the part that I think is really important. Even when you feel that this person in front of you could be your twin flame, tell yourself, I love myself and this or something more aligned. Because you need to keep loving yourself and putting yourself first, even when this person is right in front of you. And there was a whole six month period where Faraday and I were talking and I even came out to Europe from like he had gone back to Europe and then I came out, went to his retreat. We did a play party together. I went back to Thailand. We were still not dating and I was getting really confused because I was like, I feel in my body that this person is my twin flame, but it wasn't happening in real life. Like he was, if anything, he was kind of ignoring me. Like you know that kind of ignoring in the play yard, like in the playground where you're like pulling the girl, the guy's pulling the girl's hair, but just being like, Meh. and like, he was never mean to me, but he would, he was always, okay, that was probably a really bad illustration. Faraday was never mean to me, but he was actively like trying so hard to avoid me in certain situations that it was obvious that he liked me. Like at his, at his retreat in Austria, he wouldn't he wouldn't talk to me like he literally we didn't have a conversation after I got there until I pulled him aside and said hey can we talk for five minutes and we step outside and had like a one-on-one conversation and he told me later it's because the energy was so strong between us that he was doing whatever he could to stay grounded in himself like he was like whoa this is the person that I want to be with, but I don't know if she wants to be with me and, you know, da, da, da. So he was going through his own version of needing to stay grounded, needing to make sure he loved himself. And even before fair day, there was a couple men in my life that I was like, is this, cause I could feel my twin flame coming like energetically. And there was a couple of men where I was like, is this my twin flame? And this is what I meant is like, you could be feeling this energy coming in of like, okay, my twin flame's coming. But that doesn't mean that the person right in front of you is your twin flame. And there was a couple of men before Faraday came into my life that I thought maybe this person's my twin flame. And I was like, nope, they are not. But they helped me clarify parts of myself and uncover parts of myself that I wanted to work on or let go of or reconfirm you know, different things that I loved about myself and also to speak my boundaries and speak and also to hold your standard. You need to have a standard of who you want to have in your life as your twin flame and you need to hold it. And sometimes the universe gives us these tests of people who look on the surface exactly like what we want, but they don't feel like what we want. Or when we uncover and we dig deeper, they are not actually what we want. 
And that's the question is, are you going to settle for something less? Or are you going to hold your standard and be like, no, this is who I choose to have in my life. And so even when Faraday came into my life, like after those experiences I had, I already had had this happen a couple of times where I was like, is this, is this my person? Is this my twin flame? And then, you know, experientially more and more, it was confirmed that it was Faraday, but I still was like, I have no expectations. I have no attachments that has to be Faraday. Of course, my heart wanted it. I was like yearning for him, but I didn't make it an insistence that it had to be him because my love for myself was greater than me having to make it be Faraday. And that's what I know is like one of the final steps for me to find my twin flame. And I think for him as well was that it didn't matter at the end end of the day if we ended up being each other's twin flames because we had to confirm in the universe that we loved ourselves first. And then when we got together, we had to keep confirming that because the biggest thing about being in a twin flame relationship is the key to success is you have to be doing what's healthy for yourself first. And the other person has to do what's healthy for them first. There's many times where one of us will wake up in the morning and, you know, the other person will be like, you want to sleep together? And then they're like, no, I'm sorry. I love you, but I need to go do my morning routine for myself first so that I can show up together in the relationship and be more active and be more present. And, and I, and we, and we each honor that in each other. It's like, yeah, yeah. Go, we always say, go do your thing, go do your thing. Because the more that we're able to honor ourselves first, the more we're able to show up for each other in the relationship. Whew. Okay. I know that was a lot, but I hope that this helped. And there's so much more I could say about twin flame relationships. I might even make a course on it with Faraday one day. I hope that this is a good start and let me know what you guys think. Uh, You can send me a DMs on Instagram. And yeah, just I hope that uh, if you take anything from this podcast, it's to love yourself and take yourself on some dates and just enjoy being you because you are the only you in the universe and you are perfect just the way you are. And you are worthy of connection and love just by you existing without having to do anything else. Okay. Love you. Bye.